What's happening, my beautiful people? My name is Mike LaBelle, and today, as you might be able to tell, is the hair day. You guys have been asking me. I'm giving you all the information that I have in terms of hair products, preparation, the cut that I try to achieve. If you asked for this video, drop a thumbs up, drop a comment. I would love to know your routine because at the end of the day, this is all subjective person to person. If you've got thick hair and you want to have volume, this could be the video for you. Number one, the cut. And to get things started, at least half of us aren't getting the proper haircut or treatment for our facial structure, the shape of our head. If you have calyx, I, I do in the back. All this needs to be taken into consideration, whether you're going to a barber shop, you're going to a hair salon, or just your neighbor who cuts hair. I, I don't know. You got a house call. Whatever it might be, all of this has to be taken into consideration. One of the best ways to find your hairstylist is walking around the city and looking at other people's hair. See if someone matches up with the look that you're going for and has similar hair to you. Uh, whether it's thick, thin, do you want it to go up? Do you want the comb over? Do you want a strong fade? Are you going for more of a natural look? And the reason I'm bringing up head structure in general is because I've had many bad haircuts. If you go back through my YouTube videos, it wasn't really a good look until maybe the last two years or so. Had a lot of suspect hair. Maybe three years. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> ah, look at the top of his head. I mean, it was always thick, but there was no shape to it. It didn't accent anything in my look. We weren't aligning to try to produce something on your jawline. And I feel for men, you wanna really accent your jawline, you wanna accent almost a box look if possible. And with my hair in particular, you're gonna see additional weight when you're going up. And that additional weight uh, allows me to get rid of some of the roundness of my head, where it kinda goes up and then structures. It sounds like I'm describing uh, a building. We're putting up a high rise on top of my head. That's what we're doing today. So walk around the city, ask people. It's a compliment. Hey man. Who does your hair? What product do you use? Also, read reviews. A lot of people don't want to put in additional time, but they're willing to walk in a barber shop and, and, and meet Joe Schmo and say, hey, clean me up on the sides. Let's get it. I will build off that by saying, it is important to shop around, especially with men in particular. I feel we miss some of the finer details. However, we notice those details between cuts. So if you were to get a haircut from three or four different barbers or hairstylists, I think you'd be able to pick out which one looks better. Even if you don't know exactly why it looks better, you can just tell that your structure is better, the haircut lasts longer, which is really important. If you get a good haircut, it just looks good at all times. Whether you're working out, you just woke up, it grows with you, it's not gonna look like a disaster. Often, we leave a barber shop, we leave a hair salon, and oh, we feel fresh. Crispy, everything smooth, silky, confidence at an all time high. However, in one week, I don't like my look anymore. I feel ugly. That's not a good cut to me. It should grow with you to a certain degree. And that depends on if you're going for fades. Because I go weekly, and I would recommend going bi weekly. It depends how quickly your hair grows. But it's not for the hair, it's really more so for the fades. So you still have strong lines. It has that fresh appeal. Your confidence, like I said, is just higher. It makes complete sense. If you feel that you look good, and we're not talking about just with women here, it could be workplace, what you've got on, you're able to have a certain stride, a certain swagger to you. And for me, I want to make sure that I, I have a very clean fade, especially since my hair grows so fast, especially on the back. I end up with a bunch of neck hair even after a week or a week and a half. That could be subjective person to person. And this really only applies if you're getting a fade. If you're going for more of a natural look on the sides, so you do not need to go that often. We're on the same page. Number two, the preparation. So I just got out of the shower. As you can see, my hair is still a little bit wet. Shampoo that I use in the shower, Pete and Pedro. This feels somewhat interchangeable, but I really like a lot of their products. This isn't a sponsored video. Pete and Pedro is a brand created by Alpha M who might be the largest men's grooming YouTube channel. I'll leave a link down below. If you're gonna pick up one of his products, you might as well get some sort of assortment 
Uh, you're going to see that as a theme in this video. I don't shampoo my hair every single time that I take a shower. Just throwing that out there. And less is more when you're dealing with shampoo conditioner. Now, a big key with preparation, and I've only been using sea salt spray for maybe a year or so now, but same brand, Pete and Pedro, also relatively interchangeable. Sea salt spray, it just gives you better texture. Uh, it makes it where people think they can touch your hair. Uh, you can do a few sprays, as you're seeing here. It's kind of person to person. You don't want to overkill it, uh, but it's part of the process in terms of preparation. It doesn't take long at all. So very quick prep. I try to apply sea salt spray as my hair is still damp, but not when it's soaking wet. So not straight after a shower. It's a nice in-between zone. I'm telling you, damp is the, the money placement for sea salt spray, at least for the results that I've been getting. And you could probably already see that my hair's got some sort of textured feel. Number three, products. And I actually want to go over a few products. Uh, I can tell you what I've been using and a few other products that are common, at least if you're American that I have tried out. I don't know if these go into Europe real heavy or if it's in the UK or, or whatnot. So let's start with products that I've tried and that I'm not currently using as a main product. We have the Pete and Pedro Power Pomade. I don't like it, I just don't. It's really thick. I hate the way it smells. Oh, I hate the way it smells. It's, it's, it's thick, it makes your hair look like it's gonna be hard. Like you're not gonna have touchable hair, which in my opinion, you want to have that natural look where you can touch your own hair if you need to, uh, if it's hot outside, if your girlfriend, or your mom, or somebody who's trying to be your girlfriend wants to grab on, whatever, they, they can grab it, they can touch it, they feel like that's possible. I'm not a big fan of this product. Uh, I tried it out with other Pete and Pedro products. Not a big fan of the pomade. Doesn't fit the look that I'm going for. I'll put it that way. We have the Axe Messy Look, which is something you can get at CVS. I think I picked this up uh, because I was on a trip and I forgot my regular hair product. It's not bad, uh, decent hold. It's a little stiffer than I would like compared to the putty that I use. And then last but not least, we have the L'Oreal Studio. Really cheap, find it at CVS, same with the Axe. Not bad backup solutions. I really feel that the cut and the preparation impacts more than the product. It's just about finding a product that works perfectly for your hair. And for me, it's been the Pete and Pedro Putty, which is their top seller, their main selling hair product. Uh, it kind of gives you a combination of a really enriched stronghold, but you can still touch it. It moves well, it'll last a complete day. So if you're out in about six to eight hours, no problem. Good to go. I barely ever use hairspray because I know people are going to ask, uh, maybe, at some of the broadcasts if you're watching the EA events. But other than that, I'm not typically gonna roll out with hairspray unless I'm doing something different with my hair uh, or if I was going to a black tie event. So the way this works, open it up, gonna get you, this is what I like doing, got some on the finger, right? And then put it into your hand. Make sure that you get it spread. You don't wanna have clumps. It seems very obvious, but you do not wanna have clumps. You can see on my hands, there's nothing there. I kind of like, I feel like you get heated up. It gets it like a better, I don't know, like a better uh, better hold, better grip. It just feels stickier when you do that. Yeah, yeah it does. And then you're going in. Um, so a lot of people think there's gonna be a, a lot of time spent on my hair. My entire hair routine, I would say maximum takes five minutes. And so much is about getting the proper cut for what you're going for. Uh, the preparation and then, and then the product. But I, I do feel as important as product is, if your prep game is no good, uh, or if your haircut obviously is not what you want it to be, it's not shaped right, you can't use product to cover up for a bad haircut. So that's why that starts as number one. And the preparation, at least if you have thick hair and you wanna go with volume, man, I'm telling you, that sea salt spray does something to you, man, it's special. You can also train your hair, which is worth mentioning. So your hair gets used to what you want to do with it. And not just on a cut perspective, I'm talking about training your hair in terms of, I want it to go this way, I want to have this volume. It gets used to what's happening and it goes up easier. I'll be the first to tell you my hair naturally falls down. Uh, and it, over the last couple of years, it's been so easy for me to get my hair to stay up. Boom, you've got the final product. Didn't need a lot of product, didn't need tons of time here, didn't have to put in heavy prep work. The cut matters heavily. And you saw my hair is not that long, crucial. Those are the three steps. 
let me know your routine in the comments. And if you live in New York City, or if you're in New York City, and you want a recommendation for a barber or a hairstylist, I've got somebody in mind. She's lovely, specializes solely in men's hair. And remember, trial and error is going to be part of you finding the best barber for you or the, or the best salon for you, whatever you're looking for. It took me five different people in the New York slash New Jersey area until I found the person that really got what I was looking for. But I have a lot more content coming for you ASAP, ASAP.